in this lesson we can discuss the four ultimates so far we have uh, understood the difference between the conventional reality and uh, the ultimate reality conventional reality is uh, directly related to the world the worldly people speak about it in the worldly concept when you are going to learn abhidhamma philosophy then we should understand we should uh, uh, discuss about four ultimate realities that is mind the mental factors the matter and nibbana in this way there are four ultimate realities out of these four ultimate realities the first three realities are conditional which means the mind mental factors and matter are generated based upon conditions these are found in the world human beings have minds human beings other animals have mind and matter mental factors these three ultimate realities are conditioned realities the final reality which is nibbana is not a conditioned reality that is unconditioned reality the nirvana nibbana is not born because of any reason any condition any factor it exists as it is so we these human beings animals and other substances material and mental things which are found in the world are truly conditioned these conditioned things appear and exist in the world as mountain river trees houses animals beings etc however when we are going to investigate and analyze these things ultimately we find the ultimate realities but ultimate realities are not existing or not found in the world in a gross level they are quite refined and very thin very subtle and deep and profound this is the nature of the ultimate realities then in brief there are four ultimate realities mind mental factors the matter and nibbana the mind is not other than a knowing nature it is characteristic distinct characteristic is to know for this mind to know something there should be something there should be an object object is the one be known by the mind by the by the knowing nature without having an object mind does not arise mind does not appear so the knowing nature itself is mind there is uh, another word very famous that is consciousness in pali the term vijnana is widely known for this 
mind is a kind of uh, knowing nature but it exists in a vibration it is a type of energy force that in knowing nature which is a uh, mind rises in a vibration and knows an object and soon disappears that is how it comes and goes for every time for this mind to arise for this mind to come up there should be an object without an object it does not come and also here it is good to understand that uh, mind itself cannot come up mind itself cannot rise to know an object along with the mind there should be some other energy forces or vibrations these are secondary types of vibrations they are called mental factors mental factors are not the mind mind is not the mental factors these are two different mental energies mental vibrations so this uh, vibrations cannot arise without an uh, without a mind for these vibrations or for these mental factors to arise definitely there should be a mind so that is why this mind and mental factors arise together in order to know an object here we should understand one particular things clearly it will greatly help us to continue this lessons the mind should have an amount of mental factors without any single mental factor the mind cannot rise mind cannot appear that is one thing but in number there are 52 mental factors but these all 52 mental factors don't arise in one particular mind occasionally according to the object according to the feeling of the mind the numbers of mental factors involved in knowing the object differ mind cannot arise without mental factors mental factors cannot arise without mind all mental factors the number 52 don't arise in one particular uh, one a uh, knowing moment you can say mind this is important it's like uh, when you beat a drum when you when you touch the you, your hand on the drum face immediately a sound rises sound comes up so like man when an object contacts with the mind or mind contacts an object immediately that uh, vibration start in function it comes to function that's how it ha- happens the other things we should know that uh, mind and mental factors work together not fast not later all together just appear and uh, work for the object the nature of the mental factors is this mind and ma- mind and mental factors rise together and vanish together and at one time mind and mental factors take only one object and based upon one particular base 
in our life there are physically five bases five doors the eye the ear the nose the tongue and the body these are the physically based physically for the physical five bases for the mind a knowing nature to uh, stand on to work and also apart from this there is uh, there is a particular base in ourselves that is called mind do so based upon that mind do stand on that mind do the mind thinks ponders remember consider these are mental activities mental acts it functions that way first uh, ultimate reality is the mind the second second ultimate reality is the mental factors 52 then the third one is the matter in this world we know that material things are there matter arises and matter appears like chairs tables doors houses animals and the earth clouds so in this way these physical substances material substances are there in these uh, physical things or material things we can see with our eye only one particular uh, matter that is the color only the color that the mind can take in other than this color of the object there are some more sound and the earth element water element is there fire element is there but the i can only take one particular object one particular thing out of these uh, heaps of uh, characteristic or groups of material things the last one is the nibbana nibbana is unconditioned it is not mixed up with any mind no any single mental factor no matter involved totally free of these three condition realities therefore nibbana is quite refined and subtle and pure in order to understand and realize this deep and profound refined pure unmixed ultimate reality the noble reality we practice meditation that is the reason one of the reasons why we are learning abhidham abhidham philosophy learning abhidham will highly help us to analyze this world to find the ultimate realities and also uplift and develop our insight meditation